Hello everyone, hope you all are doing well. The data is growing as we speak. In last 10 years, we have seen significant exponential growth in data and it is not going to stop or slow down. Even it's going to grow even faster and larger in next coming years. It means if you know how to process the data, the fundamentals of data processing in any programming language, you can definitely going to enhance your career prospects. So based on this thought process, I decided to create a multi-part the fundamentals of data processing video series at my YouTube channel. My objective is that as you are going to follow each of these videos, you are going to learn the fundamentals of data processing in Python and enhance your knowledge as we follow each and every new video coming into this series. This first four part of series is enough for anyone who would want to just understand the fundamentals of data processing in Python and get himself or herself ready to start processing the data in Python without any problem. This video is all about the introduction, what we are going to cover in next four part of the series. Data processing fundamentals with live Python code. Data is everywhere and looking at the structure of the data or the data which we call the structure data is divided into rows and columns. The number of rows is the quantity of our data and the number of columns is the fidelity or the fields in our data. These columns could be 5, 10, 20, thousands, millions, several millions and the number of rows could go from few hundred all the way to several trillions. It all depend on the kind of data, the volume of data, velocity of data and it's all depend on the source of the data. The columns, we also call them fields. It means your data is actually a collection of several fields and the total number of column count and the total number of your rows count is basically your total number of cells in your data. It means the intersection of one single row and one single column is actually the cell. So how the actual data really look like? Your data is going to be look like something similar to this, but it may not be limited to. It means every column will have a homogeneous data. If your column has numeric data, it means all the rows with that column must be numeric. If your column has the date kind of field, it means it every row must be following the same pattern. The structure must not change as the number of rows are growing in your data. Just the data you are seeing in front of you, you could see that column one is a categorical data because the red, blue and green is frequently iterated again and again. So the unique items in column one are red, blue and green. Column two is a numeric data where the min, max, median, average can be calculated. Column three is a date column where we could order this data based on ascending or the descending order of the date. Column four is a numeric data, but to be very specific, it is float. Column five is just a string text data. Column six is basically looks like a tuple where two floating values are there or two float numeric values are there, which can also be represented as a longitude latitude. Column seven, and there could be many more kinds of data types added into our structure data. As long as it follows a structure from row one all the way to your row n. It means the data which you are processing is structured data and it's in the concept of columns row and every row is a collection of from column one to the column n values. When we talk about data processing, the objective is to look the values either in one column or in the collection of columns. You can also look the value into the rows. Data processing means you are interested into the data based on certain filters. These filters could be based on rows or could be column. If you are looking into the rows, you are interested in certain rows, 
based on the values are available into the one or multiple columns. One example can be to see the list of all the rows where the column one value is red and the result is going to look like this. So when we talk about data processing with structured data, most of the work is to filtering the data and getting the result based on our expectations, which are set into the filters. So if we try to set up the scope for this tutorial, we are going to see the fundamentals of data processing covering the following scenarios. We need to get a data set. We need to read or the load data set with whatever library which we choose in our code, which is definitely the Python. Understand the values in the cell, the unit of data itself. So looking at the data set values through the columns as well as through the rows. By looking at the data in every column, understand the pattern in the given data as well as the type of the data is specific to the column which we are looking at. Getting the values out based on the columns and the column types. Next come the filtering. It means getting all or the n rows based on various data sampling method. Means you would want all the top rows, all the bottom rows, all the rows sampled randomly from overall data set. Now we have better understanding of limiting your result set. You can filter the rows by values in the columns or the multiple columns of different types. Could be numeric, could be categorical. When we are creating the data processing application, we need to make sure that our code is most generic as possible. It means it will work with majority of the data sets which we are going to process. It means the code should work with all kinds of data sets which we are going to read, load and process. So these are the basics or the fundamentals which we need to cover in any data processing application related to any particular programming language. However, the code which we are going to write here in this video is going to use the Python programming language. So first we need to find a Python library which has a lots of sample data set so that we can use these sample data sets available in the library. Later we can extend the code to read the data set from any other source from reading from disk, getting data set from website or from any remote resource. Next we need to read the data set based on the library which we have selected. Quickly review the data in cells getting the various columns we have and the type of these columns, listing all or the n values through various sampling methods such as using from top, using from bottom or the random sampling. We need to filter the rows by values in the columns of different types. It means filtering the values through the numerical data which is available in numeric column types or the filtering through categorical data which is available in categorical columns. Next, we need to make sure that code is as generic as possible. It means the same code is going to work when we change our data set from A to B to C and our code is keep working as expected. And not only that, when we cross the library and read the data set from other libraries as well or other resources, still the same code should work. And I think that's all we really need to cover in our base data processing application written in Python. The Python packages which we need minimum to get us started specific to this particular video are going to have these two Python packages. One, we are going to use the pandas Python library, which is going to help us, which is going to help us to read the data set. And when we are going to read the data set with the pandas, it's going to create a data frame in memory, which we could process it. To install the pandas, if you do not know, it's a very simple command is pip install pandas. Similar to pandas, we are also going to use another Python library named cbor. And to install this library is also same command, pip install cborn. And cborn is the library we are using because it has a collection of about 10 plus different data sets. So it's fairly easy for us to load the data sets from the cborn library and process it using pandas. 
My plan is to create this video in four different parts. Our video content is going to cover the topics. It starts from set, setting up our Python 3.10 using the PyCharm IDE. Then we are going to import the modules as needed for our work, looking at the data frame and read the rows through the various data sampling methods or the limits, getting column values and learn their different data types as available in our source data set, filtering the values in our columns specific to numeric data. And that is all is going to be part of video number one, because my plan is to create a smaller size video, which can be completed in a short amount of time. We will continue the same code and add the filtering of column values based on categorical data in the next video. Now we are going to use this code which we have written so far and apply on various data sets to make sure everything works. Some of the coding we are going to enhance by adding the inline coding. You will see an example of that. And finally, enhancing the code by moving certain repeatable code into the functions and adding comments for better understanding. And that is all going to be covered in part two of our video. At this point, our code is going to be completely available to run with various data sets as you would want to use from the Seaborn Python library. The code which we have written is quite simple monolith code. It means just using one or two different Python code files. In the next video, we are going to write this smarter Python code by understanding the class architecture. We will refactor the existing code which we have just completed in the previous two videos and refactor it using implementation of the classes. And we will rewrite the complete code again through classes. I will be explaining a lot more about how you can create the class architecture based on the objective you have in your Python application. And that is all covered in one separate video. And we will consider that as a part three of our data processing fundamentals. The last part of this series is going to add the GUI to our Python application using a Python library named Gradio. We will learn a little more about the Gradio Python library. We will add that Gradio library to our existing application and start working step by step so that we could create a UI which can select any data set within the Seaboard library or it can also use the data set outside from a URL or from local file system. Finally, UI is going to direct us that how we need to select the data set, various features, various columns, fields and the total number of rows we want based on our filters. And we are going to enhance our UI by designing it through implementation of CSS just to beautification of the code. And that is all going to be covered in the part four of, of our video. And my objective from this first four part series is to give you everything you need so that you could start processing any data set available all over the internet and get yourself started in the field of data engineering. So let's get ourselves coding. I hope you have enjoyed the introduction and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the other parts of this fundamentals of data processing with Python series. Thank you so much for your time.